So what we're going to do now, because I told you I want to do a little bit with the book and how this ties in, is um, I'm going to read the first few pages, not line by line, like I said. Um, but it's the key concepts, as I'm sure, while you're listening in, in here today of what you're trying to achieve. So the wonderful thing about this book is it totally validates your suspicion and or your upset, but then also provides the pathway out. So in the book here, what we're looking at, and I'm sure many of you here today are going to be loving this, it says, in an attempt to protect ourselves and our families from frightening and serious health problems, many Americans, we women, are changing their diets and are taking herbs and supplements. So great, not a bad thing. We pump vitamins and we eat right. Now let's just stop there because this is a key thing as well. Eat right. What is the definition of eating right? Or one of the biggest things I have is when a new patient calls in and they're like, hi, Dr. Lori. So I have some health situations. First, I want to tell you, I eat pretty healthy, but, and then they go on and list all the health situations they have. And again, not in a validating way, but do you see the oxymoron there? is you can't have health situations if you are actually eating healthy. The problem is that the definition of healthy has gotten manipulated completely over the centuries. So it would be like me taking my car to the mechanic and telling him, I was like, okay, so my car is running uh, quite well and it's pretty, you know, it's functioning. However, and the mechanic's like, if it's working well, then why are you here? It can't be both happening at the same time. So if your car's working, it's working. And if it's not working, it's not working. You can't say, well, it's working, but because therefore it's not working. So what you know, regardless of you know the, the true solution or cause of the situation, if you believe if you're eating healthy and you still have health situations, I can tell you by the true definition of health, you're not eating healthy. And what it actually comes down to is that you're not eating correctly for you. And that's where the mistake of the medical model and all of these social media influencers is they're trying to make it broad that every woman over 35 needs blank and every woman who's doing this should be doing this. And every woman needs to make do this amount of water or take this amount of steps per day. There is no every woman. That's medical thing. In functional medicine, holistic medicine, it's actually down to the individual is what do you need? How much water do you need to drink? Do you even need to take any steps per day. Maybe that's not even the correct exercise routine for you. So going back, if you are having health situations and you think you're eating healthy, what I can tell you is you might be eating healthy for someone, but you're not eating healthy for you. So it comes down to isolating out what is true health for you and your body. And in keeping with that is just picture on a chart approximately, now this is not exact, but this will give you a good appreciation of what's happening and why this is occurring, is as a woman, and not so much men, but women specifically, is you are pretty much a different person about every 10 years. So so from birth to death, you're a different person at age 10, then 20, then 30, then 40. This also should give you peace of mind and help you understand why whatever you're doing or trying now, even if it is, quote, trying to be healthy or eating healthy, you're eating the healthy diet of you from 15 years ago, which unfortunately is no longer the, quote, healthy diet for you now at the age of 35, 45, 55. So this is why I love and why my practice is all about women, not that I hate men or children or anything, but I focus on the woman because nobody understands her. Nobody knows what she's going through. The medical doctors are completely perplexed by you. And your grandmother didn't tell you and your mother didn't tell you. And even if they did, they didn't tell you the whole story or give you enough information to actually get through because they were as perplexed when they went through. They're like, I don't know, I just figured it out or I was just miserable and took painkillers for 20 years or... I don't know, I went to the doctor and I just had my ovaries and uterus removed. I'm like, well, how does that help me? You know, so this is what we're looking at. So what we have to do is find out what's right for you at every decade of life. And it should help explain why your killer exercise routine and your diet that you used to do at 30 is not working for you at 40, 45 is because you're eating incorrectly for you. So part of the algorithm and calculus equation we have to figure out is not only all the things we already talked about, but which decade of life are you in? Now, it's not literally exactly 10 years, you know, but just give or take so you can understand how the chart and your body works. So whatever you were doing at 25 is definitely not the, the healthy habits or diet or lifestyle or meal plan 
and you should be following at 75 or 65 or whatever the case may be. So this eating right and eating healthy thing, just throw it out the window because there is no such thing. So this is why it says here, everybody's supposedly eating right, yet good health continues to elude us. And now you understand a little bit more why. So more Americans than ever before are fatigued, overweight, and depressed. Nearly every week, Americans receive at least two or three mailers, social media posts, whatever the case may be, touting one new medical breakthrough, uh, one after the other, on here's the cure for this, how to lose weight fast, all of it. You see it all the time. I'm getting the same emails. I follow the same people on social media that you do, so I see exactly what you're seeing. So what's wrong with this? So when people are trying so hard to do the right thing, why aren't the results long term? So why do they feel so great when they start taking these vitamins, if you have tried in the past, and then later feel fatigued again? Why are 95% of the people who lose weight unable to keep it off? Why are our national health statistics becoming alarming? So part of it is due to the mysteries that makes you a woman. And then there's three key things that it discusses in the book that we're going to get into. So the first one is, is the harm that has been done to our food before it even gets to our uh, table or our mouths or whatever. And the depletion of the nutritional sources, which we'll talk about in just a minute. The second thing is, is taking synthetic vitamins as supplementation, as opposed to uh, whole food and true vitamin substances. So what are synthetic supplements? Why are they so detrimental? And how come I'm so against them? Is there's a, a justification and a rationale for it? And the easiest one to just tell you is they don't allow you to get at the root cause. Basically, all they are is medicine in disguise. It's a nutraceutical approach to a medical situation. So you don't just switch from taking over-the-counter painkillers for migraines and then switch to magnesium that you bought at Walmart or GNC and then try and handle your headaches. All you're doing is switching one poison for the next. It's just a safer version of the poison. But you haven't gotten at the root cause of the headaches. You haven't rebalanced any of your hormones. You really haven't done anything to the system. And then the last one here is the raw wrong diet. So whether that's vegetarian or keto or low fat or low protein or high protein or no protein or whatever the case may be, the problem is, is all of these fad diets are just that. They're fads. That's why it's called a fad diet. So it's somebody's bright idea or brilliance on how to make money off of something that they figured out and they can package and sell to you. It has nothing to do with you as an individual. So that's again going against exactly the holistic and functional medicine principle is that if it's a cookie cutter diet or cookie cutter protocol of any kind, you know it's not it's not the true holistic approach. But this whole industry got started and became a problem as early back in the early 1920s. So it's basically a hundred years of us being lied to. So your great grandmother was lied to, your grandmother was lied to, your mother was lied to, and now you are trying to apply the quote nutritional principles, the healthy eating habits of a generation several before you that have been lied to over and over again on what it is to be healthy and what is the correct diet. So this is a key component to what's in the way. So just to give you some statistics here. So foods aren't what they once were. Despite their appearance, they look pretty in the store. But today's fresh produce, for example, is far less nutritious than ever before. So just as an example here, in order to get the iron that you used to be able to get out of one cup of spinach around 1945, in order to get that same amount of iron, you would now today have to eat at least 65 cups of spinach. Now, who's going to do that in a day? <laughs> I'm not. I do this for a living and I'm not doing 65 cups of spinach. So what you're going to have to figure out is what occurred, why, how to get the equivalent of the 65 cups of spinach without actually having to do it. Another example is the orange. An orange used to contain 50 milligrams of the natural vitamin C complex. We're not even talking about that vitamin C that you can get in the store, 1,000 milligrams for $5.99. That's not even the real vitamin C. We'll talk about that. But the real genuine vitamin C complex, it had 50 great milligrams in 1950 has about five milligrams or even less probably than five milligrams. So you'd have to eat 10 times of the amount just to get that same nutritional value. So how could you possibly eat that much food in the day? How could you possibly ever get there? Because there are so many deficiencies and deficits in the food sources that you probably wouldn't be able to do it even if you tried. So we're going to talk about, and not today, but where, where the problem came from, I want to give that to you, so you're not a complete mystery, is that it came from three main sources 
sources or causes. Depletion of the topsoil in this country, that's where the vitamins and minerals are in the first two feet of the soil. It came from deforestation, meaning taking down our trees, and incorrect farming methods. That was a big one as well. And then not only in the book, it says here overuse of fungicides and pesticides, but overuse of all of those universally in our foods. And then also all of the chemicals and preservatives they're now putting in our food. So it's even worse now than it was when this book was written, the amount of poisons and chemicals. So not only is there no nutrition in there, that would be bad enough. So I'd rather just eat some spinach that only had like take two milligrams of iron. But on top of that, the spinach also has fungicides and pesticides and has, you know, chemicals and they put in green dye and they, they buff it with wax and other things to make it look shiny and green. And that's actually not the true spinach. So these are the things we're going to be looking at in detail about what's really going on with our health. So it helps you understand a little bit more about what's going on and what you're running into, and then also what can be done about it. So it really is a personal journey that's going to be one that you're going to have to go on in a very positive way, basically alone, but with me on your side, as to what we're going to be looking at, what it's truly going to take to balance your hormones, what the perfect diet looks like for you, what the perfect nutritional protocol looks for you, and taking a look at all of the myths and possible lies that you have been told about what What's really going on with your health? So just to give you an example of this, this is going to be politically incorrect nutrition. Because <laughs> some of the things I'm going to say uh, might get myself into trouble. But what you're looking at here is just so you know, is why is the medical model not thinking like this is because they have a different goal than you do. So let's just use the hospital as an example. A hospital, its main goal or agenda is basically to make money. And how they make money is by having all of those hospital beds full. If those hospital beds aren't full, they're empty. And if they're empty, they're not making money. And if they're not making money, that hospital is going to get closed down. So everybody's always asking me, why don't they talk about or do more wellness and nutrition and tell me about their diet? Is because they can't fill a hospital bed if you're healthy. So you have a much different goal in mind. I have a much different goal in mind than that, more in keeping with yours. So ours is true root causes, health and wellness and optimal health. That's where we want to go. Theirs is the exact opposite. So it also explains, and we're not going to get into in detail, the functional medicine lab tests and some of the things we covered, they're not covered by insurance because they're going to be deemed not medically necessary. And you know what? They're right. They're not medically necessary because we're not trying to achieve this from a medical viewpoint. We're trying to find the root cause and prevent it from becoming a medical situation. So literally the lab test that I talk about, and there's many more, is they go to the same exact building as all of the other lab tests do. It's not like mine go one place and now everyone goes the other. It's just not literally, but if you can picture the medical lab tests go to the insurance side of the building and my lab tests go to the non-insurance side of the building. And the reason for that is, is on the insurance side of the building, they're only going to run those same hundred tests or so. That's why you keep having those same tests done over and over again. And they keep telling you there's nothing wrong with you or nothing they can do for you is because they're only doing the same test over and over. They actually either they don't know or they don't remember or whatever the case may be. There's tens of thousands of lab tests you can run, but they won't be covered by insurance so they won't run them and that's why my labs go off to the other side of the building where we run whatever of the 10,000 labs we want to do so you're constricted by the exact model that you're trying to force them to do not what they do so it'd be like getting upset if you went into a lamp store and then you wanted to buy a mattress and got mad that they want to sell you a lamp well, you were in the lamp store. If you wanted a mattress, you should have gone where they sell mattresses. So silly example, but I hope that helps get the point across.